Issues Facing Christians Today A question for you. I wonder what you think is quite possibly one of the greatest challenges to the Christian disciple being faithful to God alone in the 21st century. I want to propose to you that this threat is the temptation of materialism or to be materialistic. This is where following Jesus' command to really follow him, take up the cross for ourselves, becomes practical. This this is where loving God and loving others becomes difficult. Materialism grips both the church community and also individual Christian disciples if it is allowed. Eschewing and casting off materialism will see Christian disciples who are radical by the very society which we are trying to win for Jesus Christ. But what is materialism? Every person has, in differing quantities, possessions and money. These things, in and of themselves, are not evil. It is, however, our reaction and attitudes towards them that causes us to be seduced in this area. Materialism is a reliance on possessions, money, people, or even the church itself as our ultimate objects of trust and worship instead of God alone. And the Apostle John, writing in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, gives a very accurate picture of materialism. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That, brothers and sisters, is materialism. And if there were to be a particular sin that marks our generation, especially in the West, then it would be this sin of materialism and the worship of money, objects, possessions, and people. Every day, hundreds of thousands of people die from lack of food, water, clothing, and shelter, the basics. For each of us in the West, these things are taken for granted. When we feel like a change of house or location, we just move, feel like a new job, go get it. The whole Christian community is one which reflects the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the church, the church is to be a community where the strongest members support the weakest members. Where one member of the Christian community suffers and hurts, the whole Christian community suffers and hurts. And this this applies not only to the local church in a local community context, but also to the universal church and therefore has a national and international context as well. And too often as Christians, we are found turning a blind eye to the suffering of others where the bare necessities of life are in sparse existence. Too often we gather possessions and people instead of giving up our time and money generously to help the poor and needy of both our local and global community. When one member of the universal body of Christ, the church, is hurting and suffering and in trouble, the whole body hurts, is in trouble and is suffering. And as Christian disciples living in the world of the 21st century, where wealth is seen as a sign of success, the cult of celebrity is rife, and where family, morals, ethics, community, and God have taken a back seat, how should a Christian disciple respond to materialism and to the temptation of materialism? A lot of churches measure their success solely by the number of members in the congregation or by how much money goes into the offering pot each week. However, not just good things grow. Islam measures its success on the so-called growth in those who would consider themselves a Muslim. It is probably the fastest growing religion in Australia. However, as every gardener will tell you, even weeds grow not just flowers. 
So counting numbers is not the best way to measure success. And the measure of a successful Christian disciple can be seen in those verses from 1 John 2 verse 15 to 17. And the Apostle John writing, Don't love the world's ways, don't love the world's goods. Love of the world squeezes out love for the Father. Practically everything that goes on in the world, wanting your own way, wanting everything for yourself, wanting to appear important, has nothing to do with the Father. It just isolates you from Him. The world and all its wanting, wanting, wanting is on the way out. But whoever does what God wants is set for eternity. And then in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 40, Jesus speaks, Love the Lord your God with all your passion, prayer and intelligence. This is the most important, the first on any list. But there is a second to set alongside it. Love others as well as you love yourself. These two commands are pegs. Everything in God's law and the prophets hangs from them. By doing these two things, we show we trust in God and not in anything or anybody else. By exhibiting and showing these commands, we cast off materialism and any thought of materialism from our lives. By doing these things, both as a church and on an individual Christian disciple basis, society and the community will see we are neither dangerous nor deluded. To the likes of Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens, and all their aficionados who think all that religion is is pure evil, based on delusion, and that religion has never done a good thing in all its history in order to benefit humanity, it will help show the folly and irrationality of their thinking. If church communities and Christian disciples make radical steps such as eschewing casting off materialism, both in being and making disciples, I think the church and Christian disciples would no longer be seen as evil, deluded and irrelevant, as some people make us out to be. Rather, we, they, would be seen as a thriving community of people, resulting in Jesus being glorified and a holy transformation sought. After all, Jesus is to be the master of those who would call themselves a Christian disciple, and he, he is the head of the church. As a Christian disciple and the church as a whole, you and I are to cast off materialism, throw it away, live a life worthy of our God, one of total obedience to him and reflected in the love we display for both our local and global communities.